I built a passive infrared motion sensor in a previous video, as well as explaining a couple different ways for counting people moving in and out of a room. Today, I'm going to show you how I built a microwave presence sensor that works with Home Assistant for under $15. You know, like the title says. This is a really quick build, and I am absolutely thrilled with the results. Not only does the microwave sensor work really well, it can be used through walls, unlike a passive infrared sensor. This may be a drawback in some situations, but I like it because I can sense movement outside without exposing the sensor to weather or vandalism. You must also consider how close you have two or more of these together, as they may interfere with one another. I plan to have a few of these facing outward in four different directions in order to detect movement around the house. I'll need to have more than one per side, but I'll test the range of each as I install them. There are ways of limiting the effective area of the sensor by shielding around it, but that's probably more than anyone would really need. The sensors can vary slightly in range due to manufacturing tolerances or lack thereof. The ones I have seem to be 100% effective at a maximum distance of between 18 to 22 feet, or about 5.5 to 6.5 meters. Although, I believe you could increase this range significantly by giving them more power. This sensor operates between 4 and 28 volts. So, let's build the thing. For this device, I could have just soldered some wires directly to the Pico and to the sensor, but I wanted to be able to easily test the sensors, so I went ahead and soldered the normal pin headers to the Pico. I soldered three pins onto the sensor only for the pins I needed. You can add a component to these sensors to disable them when it's too light, but I'm not bothering with that. They also have a 3.3 volt regulated output pin, but I also don't need that. After soldering the header pins, it's just a matter of connecting the voltage in pin on the sensor to the VBUS pin on the Pico, ground to a ground pin, and the out pin on the sensor to a GPIO pin. I'm using 19 in this example for no particular reason at all. Next is the MicroPython install. This is the first time this Pico has been used, so I hold the button on the top down while I plug it in so that I can install MicroPython. There are a couple ways to do this, but I'm using the simple Thony route. After installing MicroPython, I began building the script to send motion start and stop messages to my home assistant. This took a bit of trial and error, but it still took less than 15 minutes. I even had time to try two different types of helpers. If you build this device the way I have, you won't need to go through the trial and error because I already have for you. That's just the kind of guy I am. My first working version used a text field in Home Assistant, but the Boolean helper made more sense. To set that up, you just need to go into the settings, then to helpers, and add a helper. Pick the toggle type and name it something that you'll use in the script later. I used presence underscore A so I can add B, C, D, and so on later. You can name these whatever you'd like. That's it. Now, once you power the device with any USB power supply, you have a functioning presence sensor that reports to Home Assistant, and you can set up automations based on the state change of that helper. I might cover setting up those automations and some other script tricks in a later video. I'm really happy with this build, 
It actually worked even better than I thought it would. You could even alter the script to extend the motion stop or do more logic to send different service calls to Home Assistant if you're familiar with Python and the Home Assistant services. I had mentioned in the last video about the password manager that I was going to start making the source code for this sort of thing a member perk, but that was really bothering me. I've decided I'm still going to make source code available to anyone. So the source for this build is available in the GitHub, linked in the description. I'm still working on figuring out some extra content for my members, so if you're a member already, I'm still thinking through some more rewards. If you have any thoughts on what you'd like to see or have as a member perk, let me know in the usual ways. If you're not a member, first, I hope you might consider it because it will go a long way to helping me get devices to test and build, but also, if you have something you'd like to see, I want to hear from you too. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to slide your mouse the necessary distance and direction to target that non-finger icon that tells YouTube I'm somewhat desirable as a content creator and engage whatever digit you usually use to select things. I really am glad you watched my video, and now I'd like to send a special shout out to Darko664 for being a channel backer. I'd also like to point out that the folks on this list have been officially classified by the appropriate authority as being extraordinarily neato. And to every viewer, big or small, hairy or bald, thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building and exploring smarter circuits.